Yeah. I mean, that's a simple answer. We're still black. We're still in America. You know, it's, uh, I like to keep things simple. I mean, it's not very complicated. I think that uh, that's always been our story. And I think the one thing that we all have to realize at times as artists is that, you know, we're just one generation of other Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. And so the fight continues. And so this is, this is our way of just continuing uh, that fight, you know, you may look at, I think the one thing I can say confidently is if you look at any of the work that we've done, that we've done, it's not silly. Mm -hmm. It's funny, but it always has an underlying meaning or an underlying message. And um, we try to, con we always try to do that. So in some ways that can make it a little bit more difficult for us because that's our sort of lick, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We can go in the rooms and we're pitching things that have that attached to it. It's just not somebody's gonna, you know, be funny or overly dramatic. You know, uh, we, we want to say some things. And so if you can buy into that, right, then we're cool. But um, the, to answer your question, I think the reason it's difficult is because it's still black in America. And you have to put it in context as well because you know, you don't see a whole lot of Mexican films, right. Mexican American films. Uh, you certainly don't see a lot of Japanese American films, Native American films, if that's where you want to put it. So if you put it in context, it's, you know, it's still problematic, but I think that there's some successes there that we can sort of hold on to and study in order to move the conversation, you know, forward. So it's not always about the difficulties. I think it's time to pivot now and sort of let's start talking about the successes so that these young kids and these young people can know that they can do it. If we continue to talk about the difficulties, then that's just, you know, we're, I think we're kind of where some people would want us to be in the conversation. I mean, you look at Ava, you know, you look at Black Panthers getting ready to come out. You look at, um, you know, Queen Sugar, um, you know, the Think Like a Man's, the, the Cube movies. These are major successes. Whether you, I mean, even Tyler Perry, you may not like it. I don't like all art, but they're successful. They're, they're, they're reaching a certain demographic, and that's important, right? Somebody may look at my movies and be like, what the fuck is this? You know what I mean? <laughs> And I'm cool with that, right? But the reason we made those movies is because to the point, no, I was given the opportunity to make a movie. I didn't want to make that movie. But when me and Mara talked about it, it was like, wow, they're not making movies. And maybe if we do this movie, maybe they'll start making movies again. You know, that was one of the reasons. You know? So uh, I just think it's because we're still black in America. So you took one for the culture. Oh, I put some money in my pocket, <laughs> and in the and in the, and in the process, and this is what I, I want people to understand. And in the process, did something that I think you know. My goal was to make a movie that black women could take, and black men could take their little girls to see, and those girls could feel wanted and needed. Every man, whether they were crazy or solid, every man in that movie was attracted to and was in love with a black woman. From the dad to the funny guy to the lads, everybody wanted a black woman in that movie, right? And to me, that was important. So when Sony got on board with that, we were cool. But before Uncle, what was his name? Uh, the Mike oh, Epps character. Mike character. He, you know, in the script, he had a, 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 a green suit on with a green hat and a feather in it. And, and, a, green, gator. and green gators. And I was like, I'm not doing <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But when you, you know, I can remember when I was, I won't say who the executive was, but I remember when I, Tasha, I always liked Tasha's talent. And I always thought, everybody always had Tasha yelling and screaming in her movies. And I always thought, I know Tasha, and she's just the sweetest person you would ever know. And I was like, Tasha, will you come do this? But I, I just want you to I just want you to, so I put her in this canoe, and you know, I just thought, and she, she jumped in the water, you know, but I remember someone coming to me and whispering in my ear or pulling me aside on the set and said, Tasha's not ghetto fabulous enough. And I was like, 
you know, why don't you stay in your lane <laughs> and I'll stay in my lane and I guarantee you this will be fine. So I think a lot of times, not to go too far away from your question, but a lot of times the battles that we fight are amongst ourselves and how we see ourselves. Yep. You know what I mean? So I see people one way, Mar sees them another, but uh, I was never going to have anybody in that movie snapping their fingers. And I don't know those people. That's not the people that I know. Now, some people may know that person. You know. And I they don't. Make that and, they, and they should. Yeah. Because that's not, not legitimate. Mm -hmm. if, if there are people out there popping their finger and rolling their neck, and you know how to tell that story. I may do it one day. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. Maybe they did and they got away with it and I don't realize. Maybe once somebody's in the audience said, no, I remember that scene where somebody <laughs> Um, just to sort of go back to what you were talking about, how we see ourselves. I think I read something, Mara, that you, um, I think it was in the New York Times, you said that you, you know, all of the work that you Thank made, you. all of the shows that you made, um, is about black people being black on purpose. Mm -hmm. And so why is that important to you? I mean, I know why it would be important to me, because I appreciate seeing it. I appreciate seeing, you know, particularly on girlfriends, like different types of black women. We're not all the same. And as somebody who's from L.A., that was, that was like, nice to see that, too. Um, but why is that so important for you to have black people be black on purpose and not be like, ah, by the way, they're black? First, I want to say it, it, it's both of our, it's, it's something we've coined for our company and it's something we both go by. But, and Salim actually said the word, so I want to, I think I repeated it because he doesn't do interviews, so I just want to go for the record. Um, but Black on Purpose is because Black is a part of my, part of mine and part of all of, I don't see anybody outside of our race, but that's a part of the detail of our humanity that is beautiful, that is specific and that should be the detail to explore um I'm, I'm also an artist that truly believes there's a human condition that is there are things that we share but the fun of it is through the different details in which we have that shared experience um and you know kind of dovetail back to something salim said i think one of the things i think is i think the reason why he was able to jump in the room that way or the reason why we were able to be Mary Jane, the way, but some of the choices we've been able to do is one, I think we've prepared, there's a little bit of conversation about preparing our lives to say no. And we have, and that's financial, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it's not always easy to walk away. And, as a, and then it's also about what kind of artist that I want to be. Very clear in my vision, I want to be able to express myself that way. So you have to be willing to say no or say things like stay in your lane. Um, so I can get this vision out. And part of that is being okay to um, not take that step um, so that you can make the right decisions for the art. Because the, I'm an artist and I would like to be able to use the paint that I want to use. And I like, I like brown, I guess. <laughs> and so, and so to, to sort of bring that home and, and put it in terms of how it can help people. The one thing we always tell people is, especially younger artists, is live below your means. Uh, we live below our means because we, we, we decided that very early on because we knew that at some point, somebody would offer us something and if our asses was broke, <laughs> all this good political stuff we talk about, and we have kids, and you have to feed those kids, you're going to say yes. Yeah. So that's why you never overly personally criticize a brother or sister who may be doing something you wouldn't do because you never know their circumstances. You may be able to critique the art, which is fair game, but you never critique or or or, or accuse that person of being a, a sellout or something like that. You may say it privately, you know what I mean? But I, I certainly try not to say those things about anyone publicly because you don't know, you can't walk in that woman's heels. You, you don't know what they're going through in their life, right? So the best thing to do in that situation is just to try to live below your means. I see a lot of actors and writers doing things that they don't want to do because 
they, you know, they pay, they, they, that first check went quick. So I, I think that that's good advice that Mara usually gives, and I give it too about meeting the right mm -hmm. 